Welcome back to Jack of All Trades 505. I'm your host, Joseph. Thank you for joining me. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Uh, this video was a quick little project that I did uh, about 10 o'clock at night. Uh, just trying out uh, some new techniques that I discovered and decided to videotape it. I do apologize that it has been a while since I have made a video with commentary. I will try to give you my thoughts and ideas as we go through this video together and explain my process. Uh, the material that I am spraying on is a magnetic car sign material that does have a plastic front sheet. Uh, I did not prep this material beforehand, so it is smooth and shiny. Uh, as you know, that is the enemy to uh, most paint. Uh, so it uh, does, that. the paint is very fragile on this surface. Uh, you will notice a few times throughout the video that uh, I will have to go back and correct some mistakes, uh, some incidental scratches that I uh, caused to the paint. And uh, yeah, so uh, I do spray it with a clear urethane uh, top coat afterwards uh, to seal it and protect the artwork. But while spraying, it was very, very fragile. And uh, the paper that I'm using right now is a uh, carbon paper that I ordered off of Amazon. Uh, it did come with a stylus for transferring the images. I did um, uh, this technique basically I learned from 25 years plus as a tattoo artist uh, using transfer paper and creating stencils uh, to create the freehand uh, artwork. Uh, again, this I do use freehand masks, uh, but I don't use paper masks or frisket film to create this image. Um, I will use the eraser to erase back uh, paint, uh, much like a charcoal artist uh, will tone an area and use the eraser to uh, bring back the tone of the surface. Uh, the paint that I'm using is Createx paint. Uh, it is a collection of all the Createx paints that I use, Wicked, Illustration, and regular uh, Createx colors. Um, these are just the remnants. When I'm done painting a picture, I will pour the remnants of whatever color back into a bottle and use it for practice sessions or impromptu uh, projects like this one. It does give you a little bit more interesting uh, dynamic black than uh, the black straight out of the bottle. Uh, I do use freehand uh, masks that I create myself in Cricut. Uh, there are tutorials online that uh, can teach you how to uh, take a PNG uh, image and convert it to an SVG so that it can be used in design space. Uh, just go onto YouTube, look it up, and that's where I found the information, and that'll explain it a lot better than I could. Uh, really, with uh, this type of painting, it's, uh, again, a push and pull, adding and subtracting, uh, seeing an image, uh, laying down some color, and then pulling out your highlights, uh, just like a charcoal artist. Um, now this is not necessarily uh, possible with uh, if you're pa uh, spraying on paper or other objects, but if you're spraying on a hard surface like plastic, metal, uh, definitely this is a, a very fun technique and achieves some really good results. Uh, the airbrush that I am using now is a Fenda BD 181.25 millimeter. I did start off using the Creos 771, but uh, for some reason I've uh, always kind of had problems with this airbrush uh, ever since I purchased it. At first I thought it was just user, user error, my inexperience with the airbrush. Uh, but now that I have been airbrushing for a little while and have 
purchased several different brands of airbrush, I believe that there is something wrong with the airbrush. So I may have to have it sent in to uh, get repaired. Um, this airbrush I was turned on to uh, by watching uh, YouTube videos. Uh, there's an artist that uh, I'm not recalling his name at the moment, but he uh, painted some characters from the TV series Vikings. Uh, Ragnar, Floki, Lagertha, and uh, he did them all in black and white using only these cheap uh, Chinese airbrushes. And uh, myself, I've always been a proponent of uh, Master Airbrush. I've used them since day one, uh, and they've always worked. I've never had an issue. Uh, well, I've had issues, but uh, I've come to learn that that was more through user error and inexperience than the fault of the airbrush itself. Uh, with a little bit of uh, training, practice, and uh, yes, modification, the airbrushes can perform just as well as any other airbrush. Uh, I do polish the needles, I do seal the nozzle with beeswax, I try to polish the trigger areas, I adjust the trigger tension uh, for the spring and I practice a lot. Uh, at least two hours every day I put my hands on the airbrush. And whether it's dots, daggers, strokes, lines, shading, fades, uh, it may look just like a jumbled mess but it is practice and it uh, helps with control uh, and reproducing uh, the same mark uh, on the page consistently over and over and over again. That's essentially the goal. Um, now, some people like to use uh, different um, printouts and, and uh, go through drills. Uh, I'm a little more loose in my approach. I just feel uh, that if you play around with the airbrush enough, uh, you will eventually learn how to, uh, what you're doing. Uh, here, using the, the, your masks to uh, spray more on the mask than on the surface itself, you get the overspray, which gives you the light touch, uh, and then you can uh, erase from that point back to the pure white. Now, when you use an eraser like this, uh, the marks can tend to be very uh, coarse and and uh, dramatic and not very subtle. So you may find yourself having to rework an area, a larger area, and going back in and reshaping the 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 softer tones. Um, so this can be a challenge and can be time consuming. Uh, but just remember, spray light, uh, and if in doubt. Uh, you can always go back later and darken it up, but uh, spray light at first, build up your shapes, your tones, uh, then uh, revisit the area later. Uh, you will see uh, many times throughout this video that I jump back and forth to different areas because I see uh, that area different uh, once I start to add more tonal value uh, around it. And I will notice that I did not, in fact, go dark enough or I missed a uh, particular detail and I will go back and try to fix it. Uh, right now I am trying to uh, fix some overspray from the hair area. There's only supposed to be a couple strands and I got a little squirrely with my hair. Uh, now this particular technique for hair uh, does give you clean straight looking hair but it is kind of hard to control and you uh, can get some overspray in unintentional areas so just remember that uh, that's why the eraser can be your best friend uh, just go back in erase out your highlights and blend it back in uh, i always try to focus as much as i can in layers uh, foreground midground then background uh, so I do try to establish those clear boundaries before moving on to another area. But uh, sometimes uh, you will just be moved uh, or see a detail and be 
drawn to that area. Um, here I am using a homemade uh, texture stencil, uh, which I used a um, soldering iron and some leftover 10 mil mylar material to create. It is great for skin, stone te uh, texture, uh, water. Uh, I also use Drew Blair's skin number five uh, texture template. Uh, that is a great template. I use that in almost every uh, piece of artwork that I do as well. Uh, here I'm just concentrating on uh, different areas of the figures on the side, the smoke. Um, you will notice uh, at, a, at uh, some point that there is a jump in progress uh, that uh, I took a break and pressed the pause button and forgot to uh, press record when I came back. So unfortunately there was uh, some lost footage and I do apologize about that. Um, but uh, again, just concentrating on the shadows, shapes, uh, this smoked areas, try to be soft, not really defined uh, with too many of the edges and uh, work back into it. Uh, you will notice that there is a progression in the headdress area. Again, I pressed pause, forgot, and came back in. Uh, so I do apologize about that. Um, you will notice that there are some letters uh, that were laid down uh, at the beginning of the video. This is my business name and the contact telephone number. Uh, I just sprayed over the top of them just to make sure they have a defined edge all the way around the border. And now I'm moving back into the headdress. Uh, Going back, fixing any little mistakes, scratches, unintentional uh, areas that may have gotten damaged, and uh, just working the area, again, light to dark, erasing highlights and putting back midtones. So here you just notice the jump in progress and there are some areas here where there's some scratches near the hair and in the hand and in the figure to the uh, left of the woman. Uh, so now I'm just removing the vinyl letters from the surface to expose the white, pure white surface underneath. And finally, I did include uh, a final photo uh, you will notice that there is some slight differences in the coloration uh, on her eye, and that's because I did go in out, off camera and add some shading. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the process, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.